Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Our topic today is taking your Lotus applications mobile. Why and how? Our presenter today is from Marga Systems, Lakshmi Sankaran. And I, I apologize, Lakshmi, that I did not pronounce your last name correctly, but I will do better next time. Uh, and um, just as a reminder that your attendance today uh, does enter you into win the trip to Connect 2014 here in Orlando at the last uh, week of January. And as a reminder, as um, Lakshmi uh, does her presentation, if you have some questions you'd like to ask her at the end of her presentation, you can expand your GoToWebinar um, control panel using the red button with the white arrow and then there will be a section for questions. Just type in your questions and that will queue them up for me at the end of her presentation. I'll read the questions to her and then she can respond. Also, uh, we are recording this webinar so if you'd like to share it with uh, colleagues or others uh, in your network, then you'll be able to do so. A link will be sent to you uh, from Marga Systems so that you'll know how to uh, watch the replay. Okay, Lakshmi, uh, again, I apologize for not saying your name correctly. But I'll let you uh, do it correctly for me, and the time is now yours, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. And uh, good morning to one and all who's present over there. Uh, okay, show my screen. So, uh, this is Lakshmi Shankaran. So, I'll be engaging for the next uh, uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, in this webinar on how to take Lotus Domino applications mobile. So a brief introduction about me. I work as a project lead in Marga Systems. I have uh, more than nine plus years of experience and I've been predominantly working on the uh, Lotus Domino platform and currently working more on XPages uh, side. We're, we're also working a lot on the mobile applications. And what you see on the right is a mobile, uh, white paper that I've authored. So this webinar is predominantly based on the white paper uh, uh, that I've authored and if you want to get the details you can follow the bit.ly link and it is available free for download. So that's just a brief about me. So without much ado we will get into the agenda for today's session. Oh, I think there's a little bit of a lag there. Okay, so this is a broad agenda that we'll be following today. So this webinar is uh, going to be more from a business perspective. We will not get more into the technical details uh, of uh, how we are going to convert Lotus Domino applications into mobile. We will, at a high level, we will see what are the challenges and what are the business benefits uh, when you uh, take your applications mobile. And we will be discussing in brief and to some extent about what are the nine steps that we think is more critical when you think of migrating your domino applications into mobile. And we will also be discussing about the various developmental approaches that are available in front of you and what, how to choose the best approach that would best suit your needs. And finally, we can take questions based on how the time permits. Okay. So what are the business benefits that we receive when we, uh, when we actually extend our applications into mobile? The first and foremost benefit that we receive out is, you can see there is an increase in the productivity and there is an increase in the responsiveness and the decision making. For example, consider an, a manager who is in the midst of a meeting and there is an important request which is waiting for his approval. Had he had his applications apps available on mobile, he can quickly take his uh, uh, request on the mobile, take his decision and approve it and put it out of his plate. So this, this, this in turn increases the productivity and the turnaround time that it takes for, to approve or act on any request. So the first and foremost benefit that we receive out of extending the applications onto mobile is an increase in the productivity and an increase in the time taken to act on the request. And also, the other benefit that we see uh, very vividly is the ability to query and access data anytime, anywhere gives the information readily available to the person who is who's accessing it. For example, consider a person who is off the field, who is making a trip and he's contacting 
his uh, contact person and he wants to record his information about the details of his trip. So he's in a place where there is no access, where there is no internet. So in such a case, if he has an app that is readily available on his mobile, he can quickly uh, go to the app, gain the details and store the details of the trip. So that way he's able to ensure that whatever information that he has gathered on his field trip is saved onto his uh, system and then when he later goes back to his office, he can always sync the information. So this way, we can make sure that any information that is required for the day-to-day -day activities is readily available on mobile. And also nowadays, we see there is, uh, the internet is being uh, used more and more often and people seem to use their smartphones and tablets for browsing rather than using the desktops. So in order to cater to such mobile savvy workforce, the organization or an accompanying need to extend the applications on mobile because the employees want not just emails to be accessed on mobile but also the applications. So the organizations are in a complete need to extend the business critical applications on mobile to cater to the increasing challenges of this mobile workforce. So these are some of the business benefits that we directly see which you can derive out of extending your applications on mobile. However, the mobility exercise comes with its own challenges. There are a lot of challenges, but there are workarounds and there are options of overcoming these challenges in a cost-effective way. One challenge, like here and you, you see a lot of challenges that I have put in. One is the device fragmentation because as mobile apps, you have a lot of devices that need to be supported, a lot of different platforms like you need to support iOS, you need to support Android, Blackberry, so on and so forth. So your mobile app needs to cater to this varying screen resolutions and varying OS platforms and different software versions. And as the term BYOD is very common, bring your own device. Now the, with the consumerization of IT, the BYOD concept is gaining more and more momentum. So the organizations need to not only support the company liable per, uh, smartphones but also the personal phones so that data integrity is kept intact. So that the organizations have some policies put in place to ensure uh, the data is not misused and it is not lost. The other challenge that you can uh, think of is there are different approaches to mobile application development which is the right approach for my application whether it's a native application approach or whether it's a hybrid application approach. So each method has its own pros and cons. So before getting into this mobility challenge, the organization or the IT department needs to weigh these options and uh, clearly gauge the pros and cons of each and every approach before they finally take one approach that would be used for a mobile application development. Other important challenge you can see is choosing the right uh, MDM. MDM is nothing but the mobile device management. So with the consumerization with a lot of mobile devices uh, uh, in place, so the organization should have a mobile device management software in place that will take care of uh, uh, the list of mobile devices that are accessing the corporate data. This is very important because we need to make sure that the corporate data is not lost and even if the, because as employees use their personal uh, uh, smartphones to access uh, corporate data. If the employee loses his, uh, his or her mobile phone, then the system, the organization should have a mechanism to make sure that their data is not theft. So there should be some options like remote wipes, wipes wherein they are able to wipe off the data remotely when they get an indication that a uh, mobile phone is lost or something. So mobile device management is one of the major areas that needs to be concentrated when an organization is uh, um, planning to take the mobility plunge and as you know that mobile applications can be made uh, available offline so if uh, uh, their organization is using a lot of apps that are available offline then they also need to take care of data synchronization between the server and their local uh, mobile data store so that users always get the uh, right uh, and recent data whenever they access for it. So another uh, challenge uh, of going mobile, initially at least, like when, when the organization is first uh, uh, trying to slowly extend its applications to mobile, initially they would see an increase in the number of calls that is being made, uh, made to the help desk because people may not be aware of 
what to expect and there will be some skill mismatches uh, and uh, that, that would be there. So people need to uh, uh, get educated and trained on how to use applications on mobile. So this uh, kind of surge in the number of calls that is made to the help desk needs to be appropriately handled so that you have a smooth uh, phase, a smooth transition phase when you plan to, uh, uh, when you migrate your applications on mobile. Uh, so these are, these are some of the cha challenges that you would normally, uh, uh, that any organization would go through when they start this mobility exercise. So with this, we will, uh, what you see here is the nine critical steps that we think that any IT department should think before they, they have uh, translated their applications into mobile. So as a first step, we see there is a uh, portfolio analysis that needs to be done. And the second step is uh, there has to be a pilot run in order to see how, how the uh, mobility exercise will be affected in their departments. And thirdly, we have this uh, uh, managing the different devices, company liable smartphones, personal smartphones, etc. And fourth, we have the different approaches that are available for the mobile application development. And fifth one, we have the wireframing. Before we even start the development of mobile applications, we need to have the wireframes uh, or prototypes built in place which will be form the basis for uh, converting uh, um, the uh, you know, converting into uh, live screens and the kind of methodology that you adopt for your mobile application development execution that's what is that's what we'll discuss in the agile and also the other uh, step is like how to test your once the applications are mobile apps are developed how to test it there are various aspects to testing just not system testing, there are various aspects of testing that needs to be taken care of, uh, especially on mobiles. And uh, uh, we have this distribution, like how to provision and distribute the applications on the App Store so that it is made available to users publicly and also or a defined set of user group depending on the need. And the lastly, we have the coaching or mentoring, which is very critical because IT help desk needs to equip themselves with the required amount of skills to cater to the increasing uh, uh, challenges of the mobile workforce. So the next set of slides we will discuss in, uh, discuss briefly about each and every step and what are the different aspects that uh, needs to be considered on each and every step. And after these uh, nine steps we will uh, get a, li bit a little more detail about the different architectural approaches that are available before we finally get into uh, how to choose uh, the best approach for your mobile application strategy. Okay, so the first step as we saw is a portfolio analysis. When an organization is trying to first take the baby step of uh, extending their applications to mobile, they need to be very careful in choosing the right application. So for that purpose, we need to have a portfolio analysis done. We need to first understand the application landscape. What are the different applications that are there? How each applications are being used? There may be some applications which are very old and not being used. So there has to be a portfolio analysis done based on, uh, based on which the user can uh, uh, derive a report and kind of compile all the metrics put together. And at the end of the analysis, there will be a clear indication as to how, how many applications are there and what are the business critical applications, what is the usage potential of each application and so on and so forth. So this will help the IT in choosing the right application to, uh, uh, to first mobile enable. So also it is very important to identify different personas. By personas they can be like power users who are, you know, uh, who are the major users of the system. So we need to document the different kind of users uh, who are actually present and who are actually using that application. So when we are uh, choosing the candidate for the pilot run, all these aspects will be very helpful in deciding which application will be taken to first mobile enable, uh, for, for mobile enablement. So this is a, uh, uh, I mean, these are the various steps that a uh, portfolio analysis will normally comprise of. You can also use any tools that is available in the market so that that makes your job easier because if the, if an organization has thousands of applications going 
to each and every application and manually taking stock of it would be a very tedious task. So the second step that we see is very, uh, which is very critical, especially because when you know, when it, when you're first uh, uh, starting to take that uh, uh, mobility exercise, it's very important to choose the right candidate for the pilot run. So the based on the outcome of the portfolio analysis, it is always recommended to select a candidate which can give high business value and less and which is very less complicated. For example. If a, contact, uh, if a contact database is uh, uh, extended to mobile, so the business benefits will be immediately retrieved. So any, any employee who is outside of the office premises and who wants to access the contacts of different, um, different uh, persons, so, and if that application is extended on mobile, he will, he's going to immediately feel the need and feel the benefit of it. So we, we should be very careful in choosing the candidate for running the pilot. So the pilot stage is very important because the success of this stage is going to decide your future mobile strategy. So we have to clearly define the outcomes or objectives of the pilot. So even after selecting the best candidate for running the pilot, we need to decide which are the functionalities that needs to be interfaced on the mobile. So the application per se will not be completely transformed into mobile, rather it will be some key features or functionalities Will, that will be extended to mobile and the application will still be available over web or notes client or wherever it was. So it's very important to identify the features that will be mobile enabled and it's, it's uh, ideal to have clearly documented the objectives that are expected out of this pilot. Lastly, we need to have a budgeted cost, time and effort so that at any point of time, we can always measure at what stage we are, whether we are overrunning the cost or whether, whether we are underutilizing the cost, whether we are well within the budget and whether we are you know, uh, well within the effort that, is estimated, uh, that, that has been estimated to carry out the exercise and so on. So the pilot stage clearly helps an IT to experiment this new challenge in a very defined context without, with very minimal impact, without affecting the huge part of the system. So that's the objective of this pilot. So we need to carefully execute the pilot because the success of this pilot is very critical when deciding the future mobile strategies. If the pilot happens very successfully, then the IT will be very convinced and it will be very easy to convince the IT managers to go ahead with their mobility exercise. They can consider migrating the other future applications also into mobile. So pilot stage is very critical especially when the organization is just beginning to extend their applications on mobile. So the third step that we see is the mobile device management or how do you manage the different mobile devices that are currently being accessed in the organization. What you see on the screen are the various aspects that need to be uh, considered when choosing the MDM uh, right kind of mobile device management software. So first of all, the organization needs to have some rules and policies to govern their data. So only when the policies are set, these can be affected when a MDM software is in place. And the right, the good, good, a good MDM software should also be enforcing on using passwords, encryption, and security, so that you know the data is safe and the data is uh, only accessed by the authorized user group, and so on. As a mobile device management software, it is just not enough if uh, uh, it maintains the inventory of mobile devices that, is be, that are being used, but it, it should also facilitate provisioning and support. For example, if an organization has to ro roll out an, uh, a new upgrade of uh, software, so the, uh, the MDM software should, be, uh, uh, should facilitate deploying and managing this uh, uh, the, uh, software upgrade from a central point. So it should be able to distribute the upgrades to all the devices that are being mapped into the organization. And uh, the mobile device management software should have sufficient tools to handle mobile malware, email phishing, and other security related threats. So other aspect is remote wipes, which is very important because 
whenever there are personal phones involved uh, uh, in accessing the corporate data, there is always a possibility of uh, phones being theft or lost. So in which case you need to have an option to remotely wipe your data from a central mechanism on the phones uh, uh, that are being lost so that the corporate data is uh, safe and not uh, theft or something. So th there are various players available in the market to categorize this mobile device management. So you have this Fiberlinks Mass 360 which has been recently acquired by IBM. There are Sybase, Airware, Airwatch and there are a lot of players in the market. So based on these features, these features will allow you to select the right kind of software that will best suit your organization. So these are some of the aspects of the mobile device management software. What you see here like policies, encryption, security and inventory management, remote wipes, etc. So the fourth step that we see uh, is about uh, what are the different approaches that are available for the mobile application development. We will discuss a bit detail about that uh, step a little later because there are different approaches that are available and each approach has got its own pros and cons. So we will discuss a lot of detail about that a little later in this uh, session. So the fifth step that we see is called the wireframing. Wireframing is nothing but uh, the prototyping. So before we even get into the application development, the, we need to have the screens prototyped so that the project champions will know what to expect when their applications will be available on mobile. So this is a, a three-step process they say, build, validate and hone. So first analyze your requirements and design your, build your screens. So these screens will form the basis for the project, the project champions to validate their requirements. So the requirements will be used in conjunction with the screen prototypes to validate once it is validated, there will be a continuous honing and improvement phase which will keep uh, improvising on the screens. So, so, so as to at the end of the exercise, you will get an engaging and enriched user experience. User experience. So the space is less in a mobile, so the real estate is very less and the opportunities for distraction are very more. So it is very important to give an engaging and engaging user experience so that the users are not distracted when using the mobile apps. So that's, uh, for example, when you, are, when you are playing a game. So the kind of user experience really matters because if the game is not interesting, you will just uh, you know, uh, close it and move on with your next uh, application. So engaging the user is an important factor if we need to drive adoption of the mobile apps. So for, uh, for driving the adoption, we need to make sure that whatever screens that is built are, are very uh, are according to the standards and are very usable and are very engaging. So uh, the prototyping of these screens is termed as wireframing. There are a lot of tools available plus we can also use a standard pencil and paper approach because which is it, it's very easy and it doesn't require any um, uh, effective uh, uh, tools or something. So you can just uh, wireframe your prototypes on the screen which are on the paper and that can be used by the project champion to validate it. You can also use tools which are available in the market, like there are common, uh, very popular tools like Mockingbird, Gliffy, which can be used to wireframe your prototypes. So this is what we do in the wireframing stage. So the sixth stage we see is the kind of uh, application methodology or the execution methodology that we use for developing uh, or uh, the mobile application projects. So as we see that Lotus Domino itself is meant for its uh, RAD lifecycle model. So mobile apps will also fa fall into the RAD lifecycle because uh, we can achieve better time to market considerations and it will reduce the amount of time that it will be required to get a finished product. And it is always recommended and uh, it is very useful to have an iterative or incremental mode of execution for the mobile application projects. And we need to clearly define each and every iteration, like what is what features will be interfaced in each iteration and what the incremental iterations will be all about. So iterations are really helpful because being agile, the users are not made, uh, made to wait for too long before they actually get to see some output of the screen. So each individual iterations can be independently uh, delivered to the user so that the users get a first hand experience of how their applications will look like will look on the mobile so they can give feedbacks 
and the interesting part is the feedbacks that are received can be incorporated in the next incremental iteration so that the users can also uh, see their feedbacks being implemented in the uh, successive iterations. So Agile also allows for more testing cycles because each and every iteration will go through uh, a series of test cycles that's resulting in improved uh, quality of the final deliverable. So mobile applications, Agile is a kind of methodology that need to be followed to have a better, uh, uh, better, a better and improved quality and uh, reduce time to market uh, considerations. The seventh step is the mobile application testing. What are the strategies that you need to uh, take care of when you are testing the mobile applications? So normally when we are testing applications, we will have uh, smoke testing, which is normally done. Uh, what we do on smoke testing is a simple CRUD methodology that we follow. Then there will be system testing, regression testing, and so on and so forth. Similarly, mobile applications uh, testing also has uh, different types of testing that you see on the screen. So first we have this uh, unit or integration testing, um, which basically verifies the functionality that uh, that has been planned to be extended on mobile, whether that is being honored or not. For testing, we can either use emulators when the devices are not available, because when your application is going to be available on different kind of devices, it is, it is very unlikely that uh, you, know, you will be having the complete set of uh, inventory in place, complete set of devices in place. So some cases you will be compelled to use emulators, which will simulate the kind of uh, uh, mobile testing environment. So unit, it's, it's enough if, uh, if we test on emulators for unit and integration testing. But when we have to do a system or regression testing, it is always uh, recommended to use devices because different devices behave differently and there are different versions. So each version has its own uh, uh, kind of pros and cons. There are some features which are available on a one version which doesn't uh, behave the same on a other version. So it is always important to uh, do the mobile testing on actual devices where your application is supposed to be uh, uh, supported. So if your application is going to be supported on different platforms, it is always better to test that application on different platforms or different devices individually rather than being tested on emulators. Emulators is just a, uh, a simula simulation environment. And mobile testing also, there's, there's one important aspect uh, called the compatibility of GUI, GUI testing because you need to support your apps on different devices. Different devices will have different resolutions, different screen space, different uh, real estate. So the GUI testing needs to be performed so that we are very sure that your mobile app will be compatible on different screen resolutions without any loss of data and it will look the same or it will look it will uh, function as designed in different screen resolutions and uh, mobile apps the performance of security testing should be carried out before it needs before it gets rolled out because we need to know like uh, how your app is utilizing the mobile battery and uh, if a mobile application is being used whether it is clogging the network speed or whether it is using only the optimal kind of optimal amount of resources on the network. So all these things need to be tested. So that is what is uh, will be considered primarily on the performance of security testing, mainly on the battery, uh, how the battery is being used, how, how the network band, bandwidth is being utilized by the application when there is a peak load. On a normal load, how the application uh, uh, uses the network resources and so on. And then uh, if your app is going to be available offline also, and there, there's a kind of testing called synchronization testing which needs to be done uh, so as to make sure that uh, data sync is uh, uh, working as expected and there is no loss of data like uh, when the user works offline and finally when it uh, comes to a place where the network is available, the data sync is perfect. And there is another kind of testing called role-based testing because uh, apps will be used by different set of persons, different set of personas and there will be distinct cutting design for different personas so we have to make sure that system behaves as ex expected and the mobile apps give the right kind of content design for each set of persona without any difference or without any loss so that's what is, uh, will be done on the role based testing so these are different aspects of testing so before we uh, actually start testing the mobile applications, we need to make sure that we have the right kind of uh, environment to simulate the testing and we also have the right kind of devices uh, uh, where the apps need to be tested. 
So if the devices are not present, then we need to uh, take steps to procure them or uh, if uh, we need to go and be testing on emulators, then we need to have uh, the right kind of emulators uh, installed. For example, if you have to test uh, 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 iPhone applications, then we need to have Xcode and an Xcode emulator being installed. And if it is an Android, we need to have an Android simulator in place. So all these things need to be thought through before even getting into the testing phase. So these things will be will be planned during the project planning phase itself, so that uh, uh, we encounter minimum delays in getting the required uh, uh, tools and software in place to commence these testing. So the eighth step that we see is the provisioning and distribution. So once the apps are uh, built and uh, built, so it needs to be deployed and make, uh, made available on app stores so that the users can download the applications from the app stores. There are uh, different steps involved in the provisioning. So why it depends on the kind of application and the kind of uh, development approach that is being used. So if you have to uh, get your applications on Android, uh, play, uh, we have to have uh, um, we have to package the application and get the executable file, um, which is like .dot apk that is compatible with Android. And if it is going to be an uh, uh, iOS application, then we need to have we need to package them and get the .dot ipa file, which will be um, distributed to the iTunes so that uh, different users can download the app from their iTunes. So this is ad hoc distribution where the apps are just distributed to the uh, app store and then users can go to the app store and download. There is also a concept called ca corporate app stores where corporate apps will be made available uh, under, a corporate, under the corporate umbrella. So the company might choose to extend uh, some of the business critical applications which will be globally used uh, by the uh, employees like a vacation planner or something or a contacts on the corporate app store and uh, uh, the corporate app stores will not be made available public and it will be uh, available only to the limited uh, user community who, who will be basically the employees of the organization. So the provisioning distribution itself is a major process and it has got its own steps. So. So th this is just an overview on now how to do that and how to deploy the applications. Lastly, as I, uh, as I said, this coaching and mentoring is very important because uh, when an organization is uh, uh, first uh, considering uh, extending the applications to mobile, they need to make sure that they have the right kind of infrastructure and the right amount of people to support this challenge. So they need to educate and train the um, help desk team to answer the queries that will be coming on the mobile apps and they need to make sure that they have the necessary uh, skills equipped within themselves or if not present they have to acquire those skills. It can be a resourcing, uh, it can be a, man, a manpower or it can be any technical uh, uh, skill that needs to be acquired and uh, they have to create that awareness. Uh, so that uh, you know, people will know what to expect uh, on the mobile when uh, applications are being ex interfaced there. So coaching on mentoring becomes a vital, uh, is very critical because in, uh, it may, uh, in some cases it may be so required that we need to have a temporary ramp up of the help desk team so as to handle the surge in the number of calls that is being uh, made when applications are initially transitioned into mobile. So this, uh, the, you can always follow the ramp up and ramp down strategy like uh, when there is a surge in the number of calls, the team can be ramped up and once the stabilization of the steady state is reached, the team can be ramped down to, a, to the normal uh, scenario. So these are the nine critical steps that we see that uh, foresee that any organization would go through when uh, they plan to take their applications into mobile. So the next set of slides we will discuss uh, in a uh, little, little bit more detail about what are the different uh, architectural approaches uh, that we have for the mobile application development. So these are the four approaches. So we have this web application approach and the other side of the web application there is a native application and there is another approach called hybrid application and the fourth one using MEAPs. MEAPs are nothing but mobile enterprise application platform. So we will, we will see in detail about each and every approach, what, what the uh, approach is exactly about and what are its pros and cons. Okay. 
So first we have this uh, web application. Web application is a simple approach. It's like uh, developing any other normal web application except that we need to uh, take care of this uh, extra uh, place where these applications will also be accessed in mobile. So we need to have different kind of HTML, different kind of CSS uh, uh, which takes care of this um, uh, mobile uh, uh, UI and all stuff. So this application is very simple and we can use the standard techniques that we use to build any web application like a HTML or CSS or a JavaScript. So this doesn't require any extra skill to be acquired um, if you have to start uh, this mobile application development approach. So if, if, an ex if an existing team is there which is uh, competent with HTML and CSS, we can right away um, uh, with a little bit of tweaking, we can uh, make the team ramp up to this, uh, uh, developing this approach. So there are a lot of uh, things available, a lot of uh, ways available by which we can develop the web application, mobile web application. So we have this extension library controls and there are some open native controls also available. We can also use Dojo mobile controls. Any of these can be used with a little bit of uh, CSS and HTML. We can uh, interface the existing web applications easily onto mobile. And the deployment is very, the deployment is very easy uh, when compared to the other approaches because it doesn't need to be deployed on individual devices. So you develop once and you host it on the server and that takes care of everything and the application, be, uh, application can be accessed on mobile like uh, any other application. It doesn't need any, uh, any extra effort in uh, deployment. Like how we normally deploy web application, we normally deploy this application on the server and it gets available for users to use. So the advantage that we see of, out of this approach is uh, the application that you develop is going to support different platforms without much of change which means you develop once and your application can support by and large on different OS and different devices. It's, the turnaround is very quick because since we are using the existing skills and it doesn't require any specialized skill set, we, we can quickly uh, deliver these applications. And as you know, it requires simple skills, no specialization is required. And deployment is very easy because it, it requires deployment only at the server level and not at the device level. So these are the advantages of using this approach. So the disadvantage, as you know, web app, native applications are known for their good user experience. So this uh, web, mobile web applications may not be as competent, uh, competent as uh, uh, a native application or a hybrid application in terms of user experience. And the other two disadvantages are the mobile web applications provide very limited offline capability. Actually, they're not available offline. So you have to have an active internet connection in place if you have to access these applications. And these mobile web apps will not allow you to access uh, device-specific features. So if you want your app to access a device camera or a contact or a phone, it may not be possible to develop that kind of an application using this approach. So these are the disadvantages. So similarly, each approach has its own advantages and disadvantages. So based on the need and based on the kind of requirement that exists for that application, we can go with the right kind of approach. If you know well earlier that your application is not going to be accessed outside your uh, uh, premises in the absence of a network or it doesn't require access to device specific features, then this is the best approach that, can, that should be chosen because its turnaround time is quick and it is very simple and effective. The second approach that we have is the native application approach. As the name suggests, this application, uh, this application needs to be individually built if it has to be um, supported on different platforms. So this is a very time consuming approach because uh, if your application has to support two different platforms, then it has to be developed individually on two different platforms. And each development requires a specialized skills to be acquired. So if you have to develop applications for iOS, then you need to develop an Objective-C. If it's an Android app, you need to develop in Java. And if it's a Blackberry, you need to know a different flavor of Java that should be used for uh, uh, this application development. 
So this way, this approach is a very costlier and time-consuming approach, and it also requires an effective skill set, a specialized skill set. So if your IT or the current IT team uh, does not have the capability, then the first uh, uh, skill needs to be acquired before they even attempt this approach. So there is a time to learning, and there is also a time to implement this. However, it has its own advantages. They are meant for the high performance and they are very easily scalable. And they have, they provide a very rich user experience because uh, the user experience is key to uh, mobile uh, app adoption. If you have to drive adoption, then the user experience is a critical factor. So in that uh, area, this native application really scores. And native application also gives complete offline support. So even when the network is not there, your application is going to be accessible and you can always sync it when you get into the network again. And it gives you access to the device features like cameras uh, or contacts and other very core device specific features. There are libraries available which can be used or the native uh, uh, the SDK itself provides uh, different uh, methods that can be used to access these devices and so on. So the cons or the disadvantage which is very evident is a higher learning curve. So we need to get uh, uh, equipped with a specialized, a specialized skill set before uh, we start developing these applications. So there is a learning curve, whereas if it is a web application, the learning curve is very, uh, very less because we can use the existing skills itself to develop those applications. So it needs specialized skills like Objective-C or Java or a, a C Sharp if you have to develop applications for Windows or Symbian platform. And another thing is it, the application that you develop is only available on one platform. So if your application is to support multiple platforms, then it has to be developed individually on different platforms. So for an iOS application, it has to be developed on Xcode using that native SDK. And if it's an Android, it has to be developed on any Eclipse platform and has to be tested on an Android emulator and so on. And deployment is also a little time consuming because it is, it is not deployed at the server level and it has to be deployed individually for uh, different uh, devices and different OS versions. So that's again another disadvantage. So because we need to take care of uh, the deployment on different uh, devices and versions. So the third approach is a very popular approach, which is called as a hybrid uh, application approach. It's very popular because it combines the ease of your uh, web application with the advantages of a native application approach. So this is considered a most effective approach. This uh, application can be developed using uh, standard uh, techniques like HTML5, CSS, JS. Plus, uh, there are also some uh, frameworks, hybrid frameworks available in the market, which can be used to uh, develop these applications. For example, a phone gap. Uh, phone gap libraries can be used to uh, have device-specific features. And uh, we can use some UI frameworks like uh, Sensha Touch which gives you built-in uh, layouts and built-in frameworks to quickly design your screens and so on. This application is also very effective uh, because it, it lets you access data uh, from your Lotus uh, Domino databases using uh, Ajax, uh, either in the form of a JSON or a REST or uh, any other uh, compatible data type. This application, as the name suggests uh, since it uh, gives all the advantages of the native uh, approach. So it gives you access to the core device features and it also makes your mobile apps available offline. So if that capacity is required, that can be built. So we will see like how, uh, uh, what are the different techniques that are used in the hybrid application approach. So as I said, PhoneGap uh, is used to, if you have to access the core device features. So PhoneGap is nothing but a set of uh, JS libraries that are available that can be included in your application. So these JS libraries have native features and methods that will be used to interface uh, different kind of devices. For example, if you have to access a contact, it has a separate set of methods or routines available that can be used to access those contact related features. So when, when your mobile application needs to 
access these device specific features then there are some specific permissions that needs to be uh, that needs to be made on the devices for example if an app has to access the contact feature in the device then the app then that the permission has to be enabled for the application to whether to read the contacts or write the contacts and so on or update the contacts so we have to enable the permissions for that uh, the specific feature for the mobile apps to access them through the JavaScript APIs. So this phone gap itself uh, gives you a code base wherein you develop once and then you get the different kind of package files that needs that are required uh, to be deployed on different OS versions. So uh, it gives you an option to build it and get a APK package or an IPA package that is required when you have to deploy on Android and iOS respectively. So the other technique that we use is a Sensure Touch, uh, which is a, a mobile application framework again, which is HTML5 based and it is based on the MVC architecture, model view controller. So Sensure has built-in uh, screens, UI controls, layouts, and a lot of image uh, you know, uh, libraries available that can be used to design your screens with uh, minimal effort. So these built-in uh, uh, layouts can be used and customized according to our needs. So we will just touch upon what, what is this uh, MVC architecture is all about. This is a model view controller. So this uh, I have just given a sample MVC architecture for a vacation planner. Vacation planner is nothing but your uh, uh, leave management which can be used by the employees to uh, log in and uh, apply the leaves and the uh, managers will use their planner to approve the leaves and so on. So the view is nothing but the screens that are displayed on the device. The screens are designed using sensor touch like uh, tap panels, list controls, layouts, etc. You can have uh, different kind of layouts uh, uh, designed in the screens. So each uh, functionality will have a separate screen and it will be used by the user to input data or view data. So the controller is nothing but an interface that taps the request from the view and passes it on to the model. Model is responsible for processing that request. Any kind of business logic or data manipulations will be done by the model. So th there is a very interesting thing there. Uh, if in uh, most of the cases where your Lotus uh, dominant applications are a, in a very previous version like a 6.5 or 7, it is still possible to extend your applications on mobile without spending uh, without spending on uh, upgrading the servers. So your Lotus Script agents can act as a controller, uh, uh, sorry, can act as model, which will accept these requests from the controller, process the data that is present in the Lotus Domino database, and send the result back to the controller. The data is sent and received via AJAX. So once the response of the model is sent to the controller, the controller then updates the responses back to the uh, back to these internal storage, which is called a store. A moment there is a change in the store, the view in the front end gets reflected to reflect the, reflect these uh, recent changes in the store. So there will be a unique controller designed for each and every view. There is, a, there is a login page, there will be a login controller. There is a leave page, there is a leave controller. The controller will then send these requests in the form of uh, AJAX to these models for data manipulation. Models will in turn send the response back to the controller. The controller will update the store. Any changes in the store, the view gets immediately refreshed to reflect the data on the front end. So this is the sample uh, MVC architecture that we can think of when we are um, mobile enabling a vacation planner which is based on a previous version of Lotus Domino probably on 6.5 where even X pages uh, will not be supported but still mobile en enablement is possible with the existing setup so that's the thing that is to be noted here so the, this uh, hybrid approach is very effective because this again supports multiple platform it doesn't require to be individually developed for different platforms that need to be supported because each uh, if you're using these uh, frameworks it has the capacity to package uh, different uh, package files that, yeah, that should be deployed in different versions different OS versions so it 
gives a complete advantage of this native applications and all your mobile apps, hybrid apps will be available offline and, and it has a capacity to access devices. So the uh, other major advantages, it is still, you can use this approach to uh, uh, go with any uh, previous or any earlier versions of uh, Lotus Domino where it doesn't support X pages or any other recent uh, you know, developments. So with the Lotus Domino being on 6.5 or 7, your applications can still be extended to mobile with minimal effort. So that's the advantage of this approach. So and the disadvantages, so it requires deployment on each device again because OS, uh, iOS, it needs to be separately packaged and provisioned and distributed and Android app needs to be separately provisioned and distributed. So another thing is it uh, uses those uh, native SDKs, so we need to have some amount of knowledge on how to use them before we actually start developing them. But however, it is not as difficult as learning a uh, uh, native application development approach. The last and the final approach that uh, we see is the application development using MEAPs. MEAPs are nothing but mobile enterprise application platform. It provides a unified platform and a central place from which you can build, deploy, and manage uh, your mobile apps on the organization. So here, the MEAP SDK replaces the native SDK that we use in the other approaches. So this MEAP provides standard set of controls and inbuilt uh, tools which can be used for this mobile application development. And most of the MEAPs has also uh, a mechanism for backend integration that is syncing data between the server and the local mobile store. So the advantages uh, that you see out of this approach is it's quicker to deploy because it, from a central place it allows you to build, deploy and manage applications and uh, if you have to give any upgrades so it is easier to manage from that central place and uh, as we uh, already saw in the previous slide that it also has uh, some kind of tools for this data integration part. So this is very effective. The disadvantage of this approach is it introduces an additional component into the whole uh, uh, infrastructure. So there is a third party component that is added into the middleware. So which means it increases any new component that is being added, increases the dependency uh, uh, on that uh, tool that is being installed. So if the dependency is increased, the disadvantage is even though the uh, iOS or the Android releases new features, you still need to depend on your third party tool to provide the uh, compatibility for that feature before it gets available on your mobile devices. So even though you, you are, uh, even though you can enable those features on the mobile, but if your third party tool doesn't support it, that feature doesn't get available on the mobile. So that is a dis disadvantage because of the dependency created on introducing another additional component in the whole infrastructure. So these are the four uh, different architectural approaches a web application approach, a native application approach, a hybrid approach, and a mobile enterprise application approach. So we, now that we understand the pros and cons, we can clearly weigh and gauge the differences each and every approach will give, and then choose the right kind of approach that is available for you. So with this, uh, we are almost at the end of the session. So this is just a gist of uh, what uh, we've been uh, seeing. So first we saw the business value of uh, what are the benefits that we derive out of uh, going mobile and uh, what are the challenges and how to mitigate those challenges. Then we talked about the nine steps that would be required to and that should be thought through when you have to extend your applications on mobile. And then there is a pilot run which includes a portfolio analysis and we talked about the mobile device management and the different elements when choosing a mobile device management software like uh, policy management and the security management, remote wipes, etc. So and then we talked about a little bit about wireframing framing or prototyping which can be either tool based or using a standard pencil paper approach and then the build, evaluate and hone cycle to give an uh, engaging user experience. And then what you see there on the other side is the different approaches for mobile application development 
a web app, a native app, hybrid app, and a MEAP approach. Then we also talked about the testing strategies and whether test on an emulator or a device and so on. And what are the different kind of testing that needs to be tested, that needs to be performed for mobile apps, like a synchronization testing or a performance testing and so on. And finally, like uh, how to provision and distribute the applications on the App Store. So that's all I have today. I hope uh, you had a good time and uh, I, I could uh, match your expectations. I'm happy to take questions. Okay. Um, yeah. so yep. Just a reminder that if you do have a question uh, for Lakshmi, you can actually just type it into the GoTo panel, excuse me, the GoTo webinar uh, control panel and then to read back. Um, so actually, I appreciate the, the webinar here. It's very informative in terms of laying out a nice roadmap for companies that are looking at uh, the mobile options and what, what could be available, what approaches are available. I think it's very informative. Okay. Um, so uh, one question we do have is uh, out of the four development methods, which do you see as being used the most uh, most effective, mostly widely used uh, approach, what I see is the hybrid approach because it's uh, simple and effective. Web approach is also very common, but it depends on the kind of uh, requirement that comes in. Okay. But predominantly hybrid approach is what is very popular. Perfect. And um, is, there, uh, is there any, how is the performance with the hybrid solutions? Uh, performance, if uh, most of the features are taken care of, uh, the performance can be compared to the uh, hybrid applications are comparable to the native applications, provided we optimally uh, use the uh, resources and we do the right kind of testing. The performances are comparable to the native application. Only the web application, the performance is little less when compared to uh, native applications. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, next question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not a question, but someone uh, said, hey, we're going to be in touch with you soon, <laughs> but uh, had to leave. So that's a nice feedback. Okay. They, they certainly appreciated your presentation. Yeah. Uh, okay, so okay. I have Thank a question. You. I have a question. Uh, I noticed that um, that mostly you talked about the Google Play and um, the Apple App Store yeah. has. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, do you have any customers that are still looking at deployment onto the BlackBerry devices, or is that uh, completely gone? Mm, very little. Very little. Okay. I would say that uh, we are very little. Companies are increasingly uh, for iOS and Android. BlackBerry very little, very very less percentage. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's only the web applications. Since it can be uh, accessed on uh, uh, any kind of devices and uh, uh, the kind of functionalities that will be interfaced on web applications is also uh, not very complicated. So those were the applications that will be interfaced in BlackBerry. So if it's uh, if you're talking about hybrid applications with uh, some device specific features, only iOS and Android uh, comes into the play. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's the end of our questions, and we are actually at the end of our time as well. So that's kind of perfect timing. Um, yeah, I didn't anticipate too many okay. questions because uh, it was very thorough and and um, uh, right on the money in terms of giving them a, a clear path to follow. Uh, okay. So that's very informative. Uh, remember that there is a white paper, uh, so there will be an email coming from Marga Systems with the link to the video replay. And uh, I believe also the link to the white paper that Lakshmi has uh, written. Uh, so just so yeah, everyone's aware uh, of that. Just to remind, uh, some time back I think we did a demo on this, uh, and I think a recording should be available with you on the YouTube also. Like it discusses in detail about uh, uh, how to actually develop. It, it's a demo and it has code level details on how to develop a hybrid application and a web application using mobile controls and so on. Okay, so perfect. people wish, uh, and that's a that's an option. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay.
Well, that is perfect. Thank you very much for, for, for your presentation, Laxmi. Is there anything you'd like to add before we uh, dismiss everyone? Uh, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. That's all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you. Hopefully we'll all have a nice holiday season. And uh, for those of you who will be uh, Connect, we'll see you there. Uh, okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Laxmi, again. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, right. everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.